So we're gonna today we're gonna make tomato sauce. Tomato sauce is basically um, whole tomatoes with a mere plot. That's how I make it anyway. Um, so we're gonna cut up our vegetables. This is how you cut an onion. Take the top and the bottom off, and then make a little slit through the first layer. The tops and the bottoms in this first layer, you can use these and save these for stock. Um, I have some beans over here. And I'm going to put them in beans because that will flavor them. So I have two cutting boards because this one I use for all my strong flavored things like garlic and uh, onions so that it won't um, impregnate the wood with the smell of onions and garlic. That way when I'm cutting fruit later, um, it won't have an onion or garlic smell up on it. So this is a dice. I think I did that kind of fast. Sorry, dear. All right. These are like the vegetable bins that you get at the store with um, like mushrooms in them and stuff. You just clean them out. They you use those to transfer things. So how we're going to do this is we wanted to find out which is the root end and it's the, it's the end that kind of comes together. You can sort of see it if you look closely. And then we're going to make some vertical cuts down the middle like this. And then some vertical cuts this way. And now you have cuts this way, cuts this way, and now we're going to make cuts this way. But I didn't go all the way through, which is a little tricky, but you get used to it. And that way you make little ices. Woo! Woo! My eyes are crying. This is perfectly normal. I wear contacts, so it's not so bad. It's worse when I uh, have glasses on. So I've been heating this pot. This is a Dutch oven. A Dutch oven is um, the perfect thing to make sauces in or any kind of wet thing that has to cook for a long time. So I have it on low. I'm just going to put it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to do the celery and carrots. I'm just uh, washing off my uh, knife so it doesn't have an onion smell. So this is kind of a weak uh, celery. I've had it for a little while, so I'm just going to wash these and use these up. This is the perfect opportunity to use your um, vegetables that aren't at the peak of their um, crunch because this is what um, cooks do. You want to use everything, and this is the way to use it up. So I'm just taking the celery off and washing it. And we're probably going to need two carrots or so. Just filling up the sink with water. And then we will deal with our giant can of tomatoes. So I got this can for less than $4. You can get um, smaller cans, but you need like three of them to make this size. You really have to start thinking about um, if you buy a can of tomato sauce, is it really worth the money? If it's um, $3, maybe that's way too much money for a, a jar of tomato sauce. But you have to understand that making it yourself, you're really adding the best possible ingredients that you can. You know exactly what's in it. It doesn't have any additives or anything weird. And it's really not that far. Okay. Excuse me. I have a cat under here. He thinks he's helping. So here's how you deal with um, celery with leaves on it, right? Oh, he probably wants a celery leaf. He's weird. He likes celery. So you got the little root end off. These are washed and there's no dirt on them or anything. I'm going to put them in the bean pot. 
or you can um, uh, put them in a plastic bag and save them for stock. If you're um, a meat eater and you're going to make like chicken stock, this is absolutely the perfect thing to do. Put them in a, a freezer bag. Um, just keep the freezer bag and go in in the freezer. As you do this, you add more um, little bits of vegetables and stuff like that. Um, when you gather a bunch of it, um, then you can you know get a chicken and make chicken broth. It's been a long time since I made chicken broth. I don't eat chicken anymore. So um, did you see that? We cut the ends off and then we cut the little um, leaves off. If we if you have something like this where you have leaves at this joint venture, you can just cut these and then cut the top one. And then you have a little bit more celery. These are just the leaves and the celery ends. I'm gonna put them in the bean pot. So now I have little batons of celery. So I'm going to cut them using my um, cleaver into smaller little batons going in this direction. So now I have little sticks. So if these were crunchier, then maybe we could have celery sticks with them. But these are kind of soft and a little weak. So we're gonna do that with all of these. I do recommend a large cutting board. You do need surface area because you can see how I'm stacking these in different piles and it really becomes um, frustrating when you have a tiny little cutting board and you don't have room to work on it. Too big a cutting board is kind of a problem too because then you have trouble moving it around. So now I have a giant um, pile of sticks or I can make two piles of sticks if I don't want to deal with that much. So I put the two piles kind of together like that. I'm holding on to them. This is the technique that you're supposed to use, which is you hold your hand down like this, and you put your, do you see that? Holding my hand, put my uh, knuckles against it, and then cut like this. I tend to sort of do that. And now you have little dice of So you're not supposed to take your knife and scrape it along the board. I'm really not doing that. I'm using the tip, which is probably bad too, and just sort of just gently going along the surface to pick things up. Because if you scrape it, obviously you're going to ruin the blade and make it dull. And then a dull knife, they would say a dull knife is not as safe as a sharp knife. Um, and I don't know about that. I've always cut myself on a sharp knife, but um, you struggle to cut through the vegetables um, when your knife isn't sharp, and that is not a good thing. You always want to use the tools that make your life easier, because um, the point of this, part of the point of this, is to have some enjoyment. It's definitely work, but enjoy the work of your life. And one of those ways of doing it is to have good tools, it makes it easier. If you can afford them, that is. I'm just cutting the, the tiny little sprout end, which I probably should have done before I cut off of these so that I can put these ends in the bean thing. because the um, onions are going a little too fast. I want to put the celery in there because it will um, kind of wet it down and make it, um, and make it um, not go so fast. So I'm doing the same thing with these carrots. I just did that the very the dangerous way, which is on the curved side. The easier way is on the flat side. And then you just make um, three little cuts or however many cuts that it takes to make a nice baton. If you have a Cuisinart, this is a perfect opportunity to whip it out and make um, little uh, chopped vegetables. 
I sometimes, I have a little chop, food chopper. I don't have a fancy Cuisinart. Um, but this is how you make it um, if you don't have a food chopper. So all you really need, for most things, all you need is a knife and a good pan and some cutting boards. But your knife and your cutting boards are your friends. And you will be using them a lot, so you might as well really enjoy it and have good ones or something that you enjoy. It's a misnomer that chefs spend a lot of money on knives. Sometimes they do, but um, real chefs use um, whatever they can find. If they like that knife, that's all that matters to them. It doesn't matter what it looks like or what brand it is. So I sort of go along with that. I got that knife at a Thai like, restaurant slash grocery store for seven dollars, and I have used it for years. So I've got my mirepoix in here. I'm gonna put some salt and pepper, not a whole lot. Very good. Okay, so now we have to deal with the tomatoes. We have a giant can of tomatoes. We're gonna need a big bowl. of these stacked up. Um, I love them. I use them for everything. Need a can opener. So I'm going to open this can of tomatoes and hope that my cats are quiet because they probably think it's a can of tuna or something. So I'm just going to keep my vegetables going. They're at a low heat. And I'm really, I don't want to get any color on it. I did get a little color on the onions, so I wasn't paying attention. Um, I just want to get them a little bit soft. And that, now we're going to cut the onion. I'm sorry, the garlic. So this is how you do garlic. Right, maybe let's do three, um, two or three. I like to make tomato sauce, like a base tomato sauce, and then um, as I use it, you know, I freeze some of it, and then as I use it, I'll add more flavor. So you might add more garlic later. So I'm just cutting the end of the garlic off. It's the part, you can tell which one's the end. It's kind of like the less pointy part. Cut that off, like that. Throw those away. And then, then you get to smash things. So you take your knife and you go like this. If you don't have a knife big enough like that, hopefully you have um, like a French knife like this. That's still big enough to do this. But with a cleaver, it's awesome. You like that, the little um, skin just comes right off. Throw it away. Like that. So then we're going to do exactly the same thing. We've, since we've smashed them, we sort of broken them up a little bit, and we don't have to do that whole thing that we did with the onions. So we're just going to cut them up. They're sort of flat now. So we're just going to cut them up one way. And then we're going to go the other way. And this will all fit on my knife. 
going to throw in there. Once you've started cooking the garlic, you really want to watch it. And you're, you have to have, you see I got the tomatoes ready before I put the garlic in because I want to be able to stop the cooking if the garlic goes too fast. It really only needs like 30 seconds. So you put the garlic in, you sort of swoosh it around, um, you will smell it, and that means that you've got enough on there. So we're going to put some um, hot pepper flakes, or as um, Lydia says, pepperoncini, which they use in everything. It's good for you though. Chilies are really good for you. They're high in vitamin C. So I didn't used to know that. And so I like spicy food, but I didn't really try to eat spicy food. But since I found out that chilies have a lot of vitamin C, they're very, very good for you. I add more and more of them to my food. So now I'm going to put the uh, broken up tomatoes right in there. Like that. And then we are going to stir and just season a little and we're going to leave this to cook. We're starting to get the vegetables out. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium and now I'm looking for bay leaves. These are bay leaves. And I can eat, they're dry and they come from the bay tree, and they're, they're really good in lots of things. And you probably know this flavor, you just didn't know that you know it, because what you do is you take the leaves like this, and there's three of them, I'm using three, and I'm going to put them in here. And um, I don't want them to be broken up, I want them to stay whole, because when we're done cooking, we're going to take them out. Um, that is going to be helpful because you can choke on these. Like you, you don't want to eat them. They're the they don't really break down, so they don't kind of choke on you. So you want to um, get rid of them, but you want their flavor. They're used in stock and all kinds of other things. So that's it. Now we're just gonna let it cook for a little. All right. So the tomato sauce should be done. Let's take a look at it. We reduced most of the water, so there's a little bit of water in here, but not too much. It's become rather dry. So I'm going to take out the bay leaves. They should be pretty easy to take out because they're whole. And you want to count them. Put three in, take three out. Because now we're going to do something that this could be kind of dangerous. So here's our tomato sauce. Oh, we gotta taste it and see if we need seasoning. I haven't tasted it yet. I mean, it's just basic ingredients. There's really no salt in here. Except the one that we put in the very beginning. That's actually really good. So I'm just gonna blend it up using my um, hand blender. It's going to be loud. Tomatoes can be kind of on the acid side, 
So give it a taste and see what you think. Try not to burn yourself. pasta I made and eat that right now and then I'm going to put some into uh, plastic containers put some of it in the fridge for later this week and some of it in the freezer for later this month so once you have this you can make eggplant parmesan you can make um, tofu sandwiches like um, like a pizza tofu sandwich. Um, you can make pasta with sauce. It's like the beginning of everything. So if you have this, then you can do all kinds of things. And this, you can consider this a vegetable. So if you're eating pasta with sauce, you definitely want to load up on the sauce. Now that's not what Italians would do. Italians want to experience the pasta itself and not have too much sauce clinging to it. But if you think about this is the vegetable of the dish, then you definitely want to um, focus on eating the tomato sauce rather than the pasta. So that's, that's what you get. You get two, like basically two jars of tomato sauce out of this, plus a little bit more. That's it, give it a try. <laughs> 